Well, good afternoon, everybody. So it was really a beautiful day today. I think for at least a couple hours, it seems like I was pulling in almost 100 amps continuous uh, from solar, which, you know, when your batteries are really low because the weather has been really crummy recently, uh, that just kind of brings a smile to your face. <laughs> So I want to show you how we have the panels organized into different arrays on the coupe. Uh, we bring it down into a combiner box. We'll take a look at that. And ultimately, how do we get the power from that combiner box to the different charge controllers so that we can use it? So let's get started. So we did this solar coupe project last fall, and we started by just putting panels as a roof over the rear section of our coupe, which is like the run-in space. And then maybe a month, month and a half later, I ended up picking up some Iron Ridge rails and some Integra rack roof mounts so that I could put another set of panels on the coupe itself. So on each side, we have a total of 12 250 watt panels from Santan Solar. They're used panels. So because I know that there's a lot of potential shading from, from these trees over here, I ended up splitting this up into a set of six here, and then a set of six here, and then those two sets are paralleled together into a single string. And then the opposite side of the coupe is the exact same thing. It has two sets of six paralleled together into one string. And if we step inside, I still have to tidy up some of the wiring because I had to make changes last fall just for how things were wired together. And so it's not really the prettiest but it worked for the winter time. And a little side note, man, having these, these solar panels squished together and caulk in between them, man, these work really well as a roof. We have had some gnarly snow and some really nasty rain and storms and even some hail and, and down in here, it's, it's been pretty dry with the exception of the mess that the ducks make. So we've got the two positives and two negatives coming from the east side, two positives and two negatives coming from the west side. They all come and then run through the soffit and they end up coming down through this conduit into this Watts 24-7 4x2 combiner box. And so we'll open everything up. And you know, when I first got this thing, I thought, man, I'm not going to have four strings coming down. But once I saw how much shading there was going to be, really it just was perfect being able to bring in two different sets from both sides to be able to combine them into one set. So you've got your four different lines that come into fusing. You've got fuses on your positive, fuses on your negative. Your positive lines come up to these diodes, which in the past, I think one big difference was this diode board was one giant board. And now it's split into two separate ones, allowing for probably better heat dissipation. And I don't know if you can see it, but the diodes are sitting on two separate giant heat sinks. And then you've got your combined output for each. From the negative standpoint, the breakers are bridged on top and combined into a one single negative line for each string, each combined string. 
both of your combined positives and your combined negatives come up to your SPDs to help handle surges. You see we've got our grounding connection going to a ground bar and then we also have our grounds coming from our panels as well as our ground going. Uh, our, this the upper one's the ground from the panels, the lower one's the ground going to the ground rod. We then come down and we've got our positive and our negative coming into this quad breaker. So our positive comes up through this side, it is bridged on top, comes back through and it outputs here. Our negative comes into this point, comes up, bridged on the top, and then comes back down. So we've got our string one positive, string one negative, then we've got the same over here. And then they do have a nice little wiring diagram on the inside of the panel so that you can see exactly what everything is. Like when you forget that it's a diode. <laughs> so just a nice touch when companies can go through and actually give you a little diagram of, of what everything is inside the box. So I took and I ran three quarter inch conduit put some heat to it so that I can get it to flex back towards the building a little bit. And then we ran down, we've got an expansion coupler on here for freeze and thaw. And we trenched through the ground and came over to the barn, came up another expansion coupler. And we come up and then I ran it around the outside of the barn it was really kind of a pain to, to run some of that flex because I had to climb over top of all the firewood that was here. Ian got a good laugh out of it. But we come over into our junction box up top and one of our strings comes down to the blue eddy and that would be this side over here, the west facing side. That one doesn't get nearly as much sun, but during the summertime, the Blue Eddy gets enough power from that to be able to power all the outbuildings that we need. And then for the moment, I've got my other set of PV lines coming out of that junction box. And then it converts to a pair of PV line that then runs over along the ground and runs down behind the fences and taps in to the junction box behind the fence over there. So this is one of those don't do as I do moments because your THHN is supposed to be not exposed to the weather at all. I've got the pieces, I just gotta finish it up, but I'm gonna run uh, some more flex along the top of the barn, bring it around, and then it's gonna end up going into that box on the front of the building as another combiner box. And then I'm gonna run that down into the ground right there. You just have to wait for it to warm up a little bit because your fingers tend to uh, get numb pretty fast while you're working on some of this stuff. With it being as cold as it is right now, I wanted to stop and warm up a little bit. And I figured while I was doing that, I could put a little commercial in for our unplugged solar live stream. Each week, Rodney Hunt, myself, and Eric from East Texas Homestead hold a weekly live stream on Thursday nights at eight o'clock Eastern. And we talk about really all things solar, self-reliance. We go through and share our experiences with you. Sometimes you guys share your experiences with us. It's really, you know, just a, a fun time to be able to have a bunch of solar enthusiasts gather together 
and share things that they've learned. Sometimes we have special guests on, we've done giveaways. So if you're not familiar with the live stream, I'll leave a playlist down in the description below. I'll also link to Rodney and Eric's channels. We tend to rotate through who's hosting the live stream each week. So it's probably a good idea to subscribe to all three channels and hit that notification bell so that you can find out exactly when we go live. So eight o'clock Thursday nights, and we'll see you on the live stream. Oh yeah, that's much better. I can feel my fingers again. I was really pleasantly surprised at, at how well the coupe arrays did over the winter time. Now the blue eddy system, because of the shading and the poor angle, it really didn't have enough uh, power to be able to sustain the barn and the outbuildings all winter long without having to rely on grid power, but I knew that was gonna happen. But now that we're into the April timeframe, that I'm not gonna have to run heaters or anything anymore, the warmers, I mean, we got, I think we got chick heaters running right now, but we don't have to run the trough heaters anymore. So we're not gonna be using a lot of that resistive heat element power that we needed all winter long. So that should be able to keep that topped off. I would imagine for the remainder of the summer, uh, no problems whatsoever. And then being able to use that other side to bring in power to the house, that is going into my Victron 450 100. And that's been able to bring in a significant amount of power even today, like I was saying earlier. I mean, we had quite a bit of sun up until that three o'clock time range. You look over my shoulder now and you can see it's all, you know, cloudy and gloomy now. I think the temp's supposed to drop. We're actually, we're supposed to get more snow. <laughs> and then, and then we're supposed to get severe storms. So snow overnight and then come the morning, we're supposed to get, you know, severe storms. Gotta love Michigan, right? <laughs> I mean, that was, that was the, the combiner, how I've gotten things wired up. Uh, if you need a combiner for one of your arrays and you don't want to run multiple sets of lines from your array all the way back to your charge controller, wherever that may be, take a look at the combiner boxes from Watts 24-7. I know Ian's got a handful of different sizes that you can use for combining four strings down to two or even eight strings down to four. So take a look at them. I'll leave links down in the description below if, if you're interested in it. Of course, you can make your own combiner. You can source all the parts if you want and, you know, throw it on the side of your array, on the side of a building. But, you know, there's something to not having to worry about sourcing parts. Plus, this does look nice. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to share that. I still have the other combiner that I'm gonna build. And, and once I get that all finished up, I'll make sure to share that with you guys as well. But I hadn't shared the actual combiner aspect uh, from the coupe build. And so I wanted to make sure that I got that taken care of. I should have done it on a warmer day. <laughs> My hand is starting to freeze up. Uh, and it is 37 degrees outside. So I'm gonna let y'all go. Head inside and warm up. So y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later. Mm -hmm.